Good morning, my name is Alice Swain and this is my book, Flourishing in the Wilderness. I wanted to share with you a chapter today that I just think is really relevant to the time that we're living in. Um, you can buy the book from Amazon, you can get it through um, SPNS with the Salvation Army and you can get it on Kindle as well as in a proper version. Uh, but I just want to share with you chapter number five, if only. Matthew 6, 33, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Sometimes in our Christian journey, we can fall into the trap of thinking, if only such and such happens, I'll be complete and full. For some, that thing may be a baby, which in itself is a beautiful thing to hope for. However, it could, have be, could be a happier marriage, a new ministry, a job opportunity, or even just to finish lockdown or one of many other things. Some, day, some days our if only seems to overtake our minds. We become so determined to reach our goal that it is the only thing we're able to think about. Sometimes our if only becomes our main focus and we lose sight of God because we're concentrating on fulfilling our own goal. There are times when our mind can be easily clouded by the things we desire and we can start to believe that only when we get the thing we wish for will we truly be complete. The Bible, however, makes it clear that completeness comes through Christ Jesus alone. Our families, ministries and goals are a great blessing, but they alone won't make us complete. Colossians 2 verse 10 says, So you also, you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. It is only through Jesus and seeking him first that we can be complete. He is our source for all the things we need. When we look to the life of Jesus, we see that he made it his business to make people complete. Time and time again through the Gospels, we see that when people come to him, not only did he heal them physically, but he also healed them emotionally and spiritually. He made each of them whole. Very often people came to him with a physical problem, but he could see their if only in their hearts. God wants us to become complete in him. And that has been seen through the scriptures. Ezekiel 11 verse 19 says, I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Sometimes, even though God promises us an undivided heart, complete in him, we can try to take our if only into our own hands. We're certainly not the first people to do this, Sarah in the Old Testament was guilty of thinking on the if only and doubting God's promises. She knew God had promised her and her husband a son, but she became so single-minded about her if only that she encouraged her husband to have a child with a servant. This had huge consequences for her and her family. The desire for a son was not a bad thing at all, but when she failed to put God's kingdom first, she diverted from his path for her life. Thankfully, we serve a mighty God who wants to make us complete, even when we mess up and put our if only before him. God's desire for us to be complete was so strong that he sent his son to become flesh and dwell among us. Jesus knows our if onlys and how we sometimes battle to keep them from our minds. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus understands that life isn't always easy, but our Bible reading promises that when we seek his kingdom first, all our if onlys will be looked after by him. It may not always seem easy, but God's word is true. We all have our if only, be it the hope for a child, a better marriage, more fulfilling work, or for the lockdown to be over. They're all great things, but we must always seek God and his completeness in our life. God is trying to teach us something new every single day. Don't miss out on your completeness in him by thinking of your if only. Today, this is my prayer for you. Ephesians three seventeen to 19. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know the love that surpasses knowledge, 
that you may be filled to the measure with all fullness of Christ. Amen.